So here's the thing. Start. That's the biggest thing. Start. Start today. Start today. Write it in your book and go do it three times a week. You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I am Scott Hambrick. That is Matt Reynolds over there. And say that is Matt Reynolds that, all the right time there. over there. Yeah, because right I can here. see you, and they know that I can see you. It's true, because uh, I'm right across the desk from you. That's right. Today, we're going to talk about your uh, your first month of tra- as a new barbell uh, trainee, a mm. new strength athlete. So fun. But before I talk about that, Matt, I have to tell you about last night. Ooh, what happened? Uh, I bought tickets to go see Lake Street Dive in Wichita, Kansas. Oh, yeah, I saw this. Yeah, you're and a big fan of them. Big fan. Big, big. And uh, when I bought the tickets, it was just them. And then I found out their opening act was Robert Randolph and the Family Band. Of, big fan of them. One of my favorites of all time. Yeah, one of my favorites. So Lake never, Street Dive. Never heard of them, but <laughs> Lake Street Drive, That what's their lead singer's name? Uh, Rachel Price. She's great. She's fantastic. She's so good. They do kind of like, what do they call it? Like blue-eyed soul, you know, is what, yeah. the, what they call that genre yeah fantastic stuff go listen to those those are, they're your new f- favorite band you don't even know it yet and then then yeah. i found out they were gonna have robert randolph and the family band with them and robert randolph is this guy there's like this black church tradition in like northern florida where they play gospel music with steel guitar Ooh, love that and stuff. so he's like this he's this virtuoso steel guitar player that plays like this sort of gospel rock and roll pedal steel guitar there's nothing else like it but but uh, uh, charity plays steel guitar and we've been a fan of his what? And when, yeah and when i found out charity that plays he, steel guitar when she can she doesn't play much anymore but yeah right and so that's awesome when we found out that he was going to be there i was like oh this is going to be crazy so we drove up there in the hail had to stop under an overpass we got there at the show it was rained out they started it an hour late Oh, it was an, at an outdoor, yeah, this outdoor the- like amphitheater type thing. Yeah. Oh, oh, and they took my little open L French little my little pocket knife. You know, they're like right. it's this little crap. I mean, it's not it just took this little pocket knife from me when I went through security. I'm like, I right. feel I feel safe now. Um, and and then uh, Robert Randolph did two songs. Just crazy you know it's just like Slated. black like gospel church tradition yeah, just pumping it. the crowd the crowd's going nuts yeah lightning thunder closed the whole show went home oh no which ended what up do they be- do huh they refund your money or how's that work i haven't heard anything they're just like guys it's lightning i'm sorry uh we can't have these people up here on stage all this electric equipment in the rain oh, we can't have you out here in the lightning i'm sorry guys we're at to we're at to call it time of death you know whatever Sure. So it was good that I got to go home because we, I just we just drove home. I got home about one o'clock. Um, it's the last night. Yeah, but I didn't get to see. Grief. I didn't get to see Lake Street Dive. I only got to see two songs from yeah. Robert Randolph. But go check those out, guys. You won't. You will not believe Robert Randolph. I, I love. I love steel guitar. I love banjo too. Both, but steel guitar and banjo make a band that I love. I mean, I love it. So I love uh, Union Station, Allison Krauss and Union mm. Station. Listen to them a lot. But I like I like kind of newer bluegrassy stuff. I like old bluegrassy stuff too. No, but when, when you think steel guitar, that's not like, Robert n- Randolph. N- well, I'm thinking of uh, uh, the Dixie Chick girl that Natalie Manis's dad. Right. Manus, he's one of the most famous steel guitar players. I think I think of all time. Somebody will correct me. Well, but, no, he's, uh, not, he's but, from like he's uh, he's from West Texas. They're from West Texas and. Um, I think he's that's um that's what I'm thinking of. Well, I'll look it up. I'll look yeah. it up after the show. He's got a I'll, song. Or send me a link and I'll we'll listen to it. Go listen to I Need More Love or or go find a video of him on YouTube. It's crazy. He's so good. They're like, whoa, yeah. Uh all right, let's talk about your first month in the weight room. Mm. Well, it's the best time of your life. <laughs> it is fun. It's a blast. It's the best time of your life. Enjoy that. I think sometimes we we uh, I think sometimes it can be a little bit scary, a little bit intimidating. It depends on how you got into it. If you have a uh, a friend or family member who did this before and can kind of mentor and guide you along, certainly if you have a coach, 
um, that can really ease a lot of that tension. But I think most people get into this on their own. I think most people realize they need a coach uh, halfway to the end of LP, you know, three to six months in, they start realizing maybe I can't do this as well. But that first month, you can do that on your own. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, hell, I'd love for you to hire us at, at Barbell Logic Online Coaching, but I, I think that most people could do that on their own. And uh, I think you've got to be, I think we can talk about some of the things you have to do um, in that first month, even if you don't have a coach to, to be a relative success there. And um, and so so where, where, where do you start? Well, I mean, the first thing is you got to figure out where you're going to train, right? Yeah, well, we have a... We have a podcast episode way back, way back, and I think the, the title of it's "How to Kill It in Your First on Your First Session." Mm-hmm. Uh, go, go, might go listen to that, but you got to have a place to train. You got to have some basic equipment. Uh, Very basic. So when you go pick that place to train, you, you got to have a squat rack. You got to have barbells. You got to have plates and a bench. That's basically it. Yep. And by the way, a squat rack, we literally mean a squat rack. And so I think we, you know, hopefully people who are, if you're listening to this podcast for the first time because your your coworker or husband or wife or cousin or Uncle Joe sent you to the podcast and you're not entirely sure what those things are, we'll ask the person that sent you to the podcast. But uh, we still get people join at Barbell Logic Online Coaching that do their first workout on a quote unquote squat rack in a Smith machine. Right. Because they don't know the difference. So if if that barbell is fixed on a track, that is not a squat rack and cannot be used to squat with. But otherwise, if it's a you know if it's a freestanding thing where you're controlling the barbell and the barbell's on your back, it will work. Now there are what we call squat cages, which have four vertical posts, and you're kind of inside this cube. Uh, that's the best option. There are the tiered squat racks, which have a, a big angle. Like you, you lift it out, you have to walk yeah. back about four feet down the angle, right? So the, there's like a 45 degree angle, and there's pegs on this 45 degree uh, beam, and uh, that's not the best option, but it will certainly work for your first month. It'd be fine, and you got You know, you just need a barbell, and, and people like us uh, are are very. Um, picky about our barbells and whatnot but that first month it doesn't matter yep you can lift on in, any barbell will do any old pig iron will do it doesn't matter what weights you have try to use the same weights every time if you use you know if you're going somewhere that's got kind of crappy weights or garage garage sale type weights or pig iron type weights you just want to try to use the same the same weights every time because those weights will vary in their actual poundages um but in general man you just you got to have a rack you got to have a barbell got to have weights and you got to have just a basic bench for the bench press. Um, yeah. So th- you got to have those four things. Just need the basic stuff. Uh, and you go ahead and get a belt and get shoes. Don't be cheap. Just yep. go ahead and get that stuff. By the way, Matt rogue yes. has their old timey. The do wins. Do wins with the yeah, stack leather heel for one twenty five. Yeah. They come in black yep. and they come in sure red. Those right now. I ordered, and we don't. Let's be clear. Rogue is not a sponsor of the show. We would love for Rogue to sponsor the show, yep. uh, but they they're not. We don't make a dollar off that at all. Uh, those are great shoes. Those Rogue Do Wins, Do Wins, whatever they are. I, Chinese I call it made. Do Win. I don't know. Um, those what do are, you think those of are those? excellent shoes. What do I think of them? Yeah, I love them. Uh, let me tell you why I don't wear them. The only thing I think they're they're made for a wide foot. Yep. And it does seem like I don't know why it seems like most of our people have wide feet. Uh, I don't. I have very narrow feet. Very no girth. No girth. Essentially anything so on my body. It's gross. And uh, and so my feet are are long and skinny. And so uh, I like Adidas shoes a little bit better. But listen, Adidas doesn't make a bad squat shoe. Man, Nike does. Nike doesn't really make a bad squat shoe. Well, we'll go back to Adidas here in a minute. But these do wins, the classic do win lifter on Rogue. Mm-hmm. Great it's suede they're, and they're canvas, shoes. so it's it breathes a little more than their than their. Uh, other do win and it's got the stack leather heel you could resold this shoe if you need to 125 right. it's a great shoe yep shoe will last forever uh the other ones are now on sale because they've got the new throw the throwback ones available mm. now so you can go buy the other rogue do win which is kind of man-made upper right yeah for 76 dollars yeah that's cheap that's cheap yeah go get those yeah, and that's probably a better shoe than the the other cheap version of a shoe in that category of price range is, a, is an Adidas Powerlift shoe. Yeah. 
uh, which you, and a lot of times you can get those on Amazon, maybe cheaper than anywhere else. And, it, and you can find those for somewhere in the ballpark of $65 to $95, depending on what size shoe you get and what colors and whatnot. And it's but, a pretty good shoe, but yeah, that, the Rogue one is going to... It is. The, the doing's better. Um, so yeah, so get some shoes. And then we, again, belts. We love Dominion. Uh, go to Dominion Strength or DominionStrengthTraining.com. And you can get a belt there. Uh, Blake and Katie make awesome belts. We continue to get emails from people that they deal with. Uh, you can use discount code Logic there to save you ten dollars, ten percent. I don't ten remember. something. One of those things. Save you 10, money. Save you money if you use discount code Logic, and you can get get yourself a good, just normal, solid leather belt. The thing about buying a good pair of shoes and good belt is you'll never need to buy another one, um, or you know, like you you can resole. Especially if you get those those do ends, you can resole those shoes. 10 years from now. I wore the insides of my old Dewins out. Yeah. I wore the insides of my shoes out because I got real bony, crunchy heels. Like, I mean, like when I go get a That's massage, so they all, my my therapist almost always talk about my feet. They're like, boy, you got crunchy. Like my feet are like a bag of potato chips or like like if you took a like those like big, chunky gravel and you filled it with fill the sock up with it. That's what my feet feel like. So I don't have ugly feet. They're normal looking feet, but when you actually get in there and start, dude, I'm. Not, <laughs> we've talked about this before. My body size, my joints are small. It was not made to do professional strongman. Right. I wasn't made to run. My feet were not made to run down the street with thousand pounds on my back. That was that was idiocy. So, but we're not. Ta- you're not going to do that because this is your first month of training. What you're going to do is you're going to squat. You're going to press. You're going to deadlift and you're going to bench press. You're going to do those four things in your first month. And and you're going to do them to the best of your abilities with great form. We've got great videos on YouTube on how to perform those lifts. The Starting Strength Basic Barbell Training book uh, has great examples and a, a very detailed written description of how to perform those lifts. And you're going to perform them to the best of your abilities. And you're going to work up and do. you're going to add about five pounds to every workout. Uh, or every every single lift, and if and, you're a, if you're a guy, you should be able to do that for the four weeks straight, no question about it. Yeah, on every single lift, it, it's possible that you'll need to move to micro plates on the uh, on the press towards the end of that. Now, m- almost all females during the first month uh, will need to start to use some smaller plates than the standard two point fives. Um, on the upper body lifts, especially, um, probably not on the, on the squat and the deadlift. And so, uh, we love micro gains, Mike at micro gains. You can go to micro gains there as well. Micro G A I N Z and also use discount code logic for a discount there. Uh, but those are, that's it, man. You just go up and you, and you, and you go up and wait a little bit every single session. Scott, here's the question I get most often by my people in the first month, especially if they don't have a coach. So they know that form matters, and we've preached that form matters, and form matters. Form matters tremendously. Yep. Matter of fact, the only thing that's more important than form is consistency, in my opinion. Would you agree with that? Yep. Not missing is the most important. Not thing. missing is the most important. Outside of not missing, form is very important. And so the, the question that I'll get from beginners is they go in and they lift, and they feel like their form isn't very good, and they say, hey, should I take some weight off the bar and, and make the form better? Form. Oh, should I stay at this weight and work on my form? That's what and say. what's the answer? No. No. Put more weight because on Because how much are you going up? Right? So if, if, you're, if you're a male and you're squatting 135, 145, if you're a female, you're squatting 75, 80 pounds, and you have to go up five pounds, how much more stressful is going from 145 to 150 as a guy? It's, it's not very 3%. stressful. It's just, right? So what happens is as the... As you progress in linear progression, as you get through the first month and the second and the third month, the form gets a little bit better every single workout. That's the goal. Right. And there's, there are going to be days where you're going to go in and the form is just, it's not going to get better. It's going to get, you're going to go in and it's going to just not feel good and you're, you're not going to be able to hit your groove, but you're going to complete your three sets of five on the main lifts. And guess what you're going to do two days later? You're, you're just going to go up because that's what we're doing. The point of this is that we're going to try to get strong as fast as we possibly can, and we're going to do that with consistency and form, making sure that our consistency is there and our form consi- continues to get better. But the goal here is increased force production because we're trying to get strong. So if you're listening to this and you're like, man, I, I believe that strength is important for me, and you understand that strength makes all other physical abilities better, so you will become 
in better condition, you will have better mobility, you, you know, full range of motion, better balance, better, all of those things will occur because of strength. So you get the biggest bang for your buck because of strength. Then we can't take any time in the first month or two months and not add weight to the bar. So we keep adding weight to the bar and we make sure that the form gets better every single set or every, or every single rep or every single day. And so, um, and that's possible when it's still light. You can still, it, that's still that's possible. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. If your form struggles at that 145 pound squat, adding five pounds isn't going to make it so that the form gets worse. The form isn't bad at 145 as a male, or I'm just using an example number because the weight is heavy. The form isn't great because you haven't set the motor pattern for how to perform it correctly, right? It would be the same thing if, Anything that would require sort of hand-eye coordination and dexterity, if you were, you know, if you were bowling, like I don't have good bowling form, and you just have to learn how to, or a golf swing, you just have to keep doing it over and over and over again in order to to create this very um, repeatable motor pattern. And so that's the goal. And so we clean up a little bit at a time. Now here's the question: What do you do if you don't have a coach? How do you make sure your form gets better? I mean, legitimately, I don't want to give the answer. We'll just go get a coach. Right. Yeah. Well, what are some things that they have some practical things they can do to make sure their form is getting is improving? You should video yourself and watch every time. And when you when you video yourself and watch and you're still not able to fix it, you'll have the video and then you can go post that on uh, one of the forums in our community and ask for a form check and you can get some form checks for free. But. All of this is predicated on you already doing some work, right? You need to have uh, read the book and you need to have gone to the Barbell Logic YouTube channel and watched the how to videos on how to squat, how to press, how to bench press, how to deadlift. And, you know, so assuming you've got that sort of basic knowledge already about the model, once your own self coaching uh, uh, ability fails you, you can go get those free form checks. Yeah. Yeah. And we would love, we'd love to see those. I mean, especially if you'll email support. We, Nikki Berman does a tremendous job for us on walking people through that. We don't do any sort of high pressure sales. If you just want to see what that experience is like, you can reach out to her and you can send an email to support at barbellologic-logic.com. And, uh, you know, she'll walk you through, she'll help you any way she can and, and talk to you, give you some kind of life experience of what it looks like at, in online coaching. People, people will tag me in Instagram posts and I'll, I'll give yeah. one every now and then I'll give one when yeah, I can. Too. I give one when I can. I'll even do a video breakdown. I won't do it sometimes. every time, but I do it a lot. I do them pretty much every time. Here's when I don't do it. If somebody has sent it to me six times, I, I had another kid email me this morning. Um, and he, he just, I, I don't even know who this person is, but he's got one of those weird email addresses and he'll be like, uh, Mr. Reynolds. And he asked me another question. It's about once every two weeks. I get a question specifically. Right. It's not like for the podcast. It's just like a. It's it's helping him. Out. Like he's trying to get online coaching from me for free. Uh, we're happy to give you a, a taste of that uh, to see what that's like and what the experience would be like in online coaching. Uh, you know, just you know, don't ask for it six times in a row. Right. In a row. So he, here's the thing. I think you should video every set that you do. I really do. I think that that would be optimal, and I think it's optimal to watch it after you complete each set. So I, you know. If you don't want to do the first couple sets of empty bar and whatnot, it's not that big of a deal. But once you start getting those warm ups moving, I would video your warm ups and then I would just sit down and look at it and go, okay, I've seen the videos on YouTube. I've seen the drawings in the starting strength book. Does my squat look like this? Mm. And then go, well, okay, look, I can see my heels come up off the ground. If my heels came up off the ground, then the weight has to be more forward on the ball of my foot or up on my toes. I need to fix that on the next set. Okay, boom. And then you can just delete the video if you want to right. from the warm-ups. And then, and then set your camera back up. You know, Get yourself a little $10 tripod from Amazon and set it back up and squat again and look at it again because I think it will refine your eye as a coach. And even if that's something that you don't want to do in the future for like money – I think it's important to have a good eye for doing that stuff, right? And so, uh, and, and here's what you're looking for: you're not trying to make your movement or make your squat look like the picture of the guy on the front of the book. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure, you know, is is my hip below parallel at the bottom? Am I, is my hip below parallel? And is the barbell over the center of my foot? That's right. And if it, am I balanced on mid? And if it isn't, if it isn't what do I need to think in order to make myself do that right the next time? Right. And the thing that you need to think is a cue. 
it's so we're talking about self coaching here. It's a cue. It's not, um, oh, I need to keep the bar over my foot. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's too long. It's too long. And it doesn't really actually tell you what to do. It's right. going to be something like get your butt back, feel your foot, uh, right. knees Maybe out. Heels. You know, you need yeah. to be thinking about something specific to do, not just something as vague as put the bar over your foot. That's right. Although that does work for some folks. Yep. Uh, so I think you have, you have to develop a cue and then you try the cue and look at your next video and see if the form improved. And if the form improved, that cue was meaningful to you and you can con continue to use that one or maybe even tweak it a little bit until you get closer and closer. You can do that, that self, that self coaching. Yeah, absolutely. And you're going to go up in weight. So for you folks that we talked about micro plates, if you're actually new to this entirely, most gyms don't have a plate smaller than two and a half. And of course we put one on each side of the barbell. And so we end up taking a five pound increase in weight if that's the smallest plate you've got. But there's a time when that doesn't work and you'll want a one and a quarter uh, pound plate. Or if you're a small lady, you might want uh, even smaller plates. So get those and train three times a week every week if you show up three times a week for four weeks you'll probably be stronger at the end of those four weeks than you've ever been in your whole life you're going to show up three times a week and you're going to record what you did in a paper book that's right i can put it in your phone although you can you can put it I, I did that for a long time i put it in a spreadsheet and in my book but put it in your book yeah. i looked at my first book uh last week mm. You, you're going to you get look choked at, up. I, I did not. I threw it. <laughs> no, <laughs> you're going to look at your first book a lot more than you think. It, it's, yeah. it's, uh, it's good. You won't look at your second book maybe ever, but, but right. you'll look at that first one a bunch. Stuff. In fact, I should take the mine and scan the first three or four or five pages out of it. Yeah. We were talking about doing that. I didn't do the same thing as I've got mine as well. I mean, I've got mine from like 98, mm -hmm. You know, when I really started, I was writing a book. I was doing powerlifting. I was doing kind of West Side style powerlifting. But it's still really interesting to look and see what I, I mean, of course, this is 97, 98. That's way before Starting Strength yeah. was written. That book, you know, that was, that was eight years before the book was written. I think so. I squatted and pressed 85. <laughs> That's awesome. I think. And I pulled, I know that I pulled 185. Yeah. And uh, onward and upward, man. I've put 200 pounds on my deadlift in the six years. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> 80 pounds. Um, you ask me how much weight I've put on my deadlift in the last yeah, six years. Yeah, how much you put on. <laughs> My Matt's like <laughs> negative. Zero. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, you, yeah, you get yourself a composition book and you just write what you do. You put a date on it and you, I, okay, I squat. You write squat. And Don't get a spiral. You're right. A composition. One of them no, is so fall up. apart. You need a, a bound composition. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, those work yeah. great, and uh, and that that's all you do, and so and so you just go to the gym three times a week, and you squat, you bench press or press, and you deadlift. Yeah, and that's probably that first month, and then you just add weight every single time. Now, what do we do outside the weight room? So that's inside the weight room. What do they got to do outside the weight room that first month? Eat their protein. You're going to eat. You're probably going to have to eat more unless you're a hog belly already. Uh, yeah, and, that's true. And, that's probably uh, a good caveat. You're going to have to eat more. And even if you are someone who has been overeating, you're probably going to have to eat more protein. Ladies are going to eat, need to eat 160 grams of protein. Men are going to need to eat 200 or more in general. Those are kind of rules of thumb. I don't know who you yep. are, but that's probably right. And you're going to have to rest. You know, don't do cardio. You're going to rest. You are, you are, you are synthesizing more muscle protein in the first, uh, in the first month of LP then you will put you will ever synthesize after age 10. That's right. You know, a That's baby right. may be synthesizing more muscle and protein uh, every day than uh, somebody in LP, but that'd be about the only person. Yeah, the change that occurs in your body that first four to eight weeks is really pretty incredible. And, and it, it, I think it really comes from like week four to week eight because the weight is so light, the first two or three weeks, you're sort of just trying to like figure out the motor patterns and whatnot. Yeah. And then it kind of starts getting heavy by week four. And that kind of week four to eight, gosh, you just you you just look like a different person. And um, but it requires some protein. And so for some of you, for most of you, you're probably going to need to get some basic whey protein and uh, to to drink a little bit because it's a little harder to eat that much protein. If you can eat that much protein, eat it. It's probably better to eat, right? But if you can't, you're struggling to get your protein in. Add a protein shake or two. 
uh, every day uh, between your meals at night before you go to bed somewhere in there and uh, and and that'll get you the ability to make sure that you have the ability to actually build that muscle muscles built out of protein so we got to have some protein there uh, for your body to utilize to, to build that extra muscle and uh, gosh it makes a big difference and and then the, the keys just staying with it that consistency is where it's at you can't uh, during that first month you can't you can't go on vacation and miss right if you go on vacation in the first month you got to find yourself a gym to go to that like, you've been training for eight months uh, and you want to go on vacation you've been training for a year I have clients do this all the time I got a guy that adjusted his schedule a little bit this week he's only getting he trained Sunday and Tuesday he trained yesterday and normally trains Monday Wednesday Friday He's taking a, it's July fourth week, and he's going to take the rest of the week off. That's fine. That guy's been training a long time. Yeah. But that first month or six weeks, eight weeks, twelve weeks, you, know, you got to get your three times a weekend, and so you might have to shift workouts a day or two, one day forward, one day back. Uh, but you got to make sure you get those three workouts but in. Don't wait till vacation's over to start. Go ahead and start. If you've already yeah. got the cruise, yeah. you already paid for the cruise. That's fine. Do three weeks of LP. Go do the cruise, and then go back to it. Well, hell, but Cruz is liable to have a decent gym. Right, yeah. You're liable to get in there and actually train a little bit. So here's the thing. Start. That's the biggest thing. Start. Yep. Start today. Start today. Write it in your book. Before you go in the gym the first day, put a tape measure around your waist and uh, get on the scales. If you're a guy, you're going to want that num- You're going to want those numbers someday. Please do that and go do it three times a week. Just do your best and uh, be kind to yourself. Let yourself uh, let yourself struggle and be less than perfect. It's fine. You're you're new to a sport, and uh, if you were people, people tend to think. I think people that come to this think it's simpler than it is. We we overcomplicate it. There's no question about it that you and I sure. overcomplicate this. But sure. but you know people would look at something like golf and be like, okay, this is your first month of playing golf. Well, your sw- golf swing is not going to be any good, right? And they, sure. and they know, oh, my tennis game is not going to be any good in my first month. Your squat game is not going to be very good either. And it's, right. it's, it's harder to squat properly than you think it is. So just let yourself flounder and let yourself suck a little bit and go in there. And at the end of a month, you're going to have 12 squat sessions in. Um, you should have put uh, 60 pounds on your squat because you're going up five pounds a session three times a week. Yep. Should go yep. So at the end of a month, you're going to be a little better than you were. Your squat's going to be 60 pounds minimum heavier. Your deadlift's going to be 60 pounds minimum heavier. Your bench and your press might be that much heavier, uh, but they're certainly going to be considerably heavier than they were. And you're going to have a whole lot more muscle protein uh, on your body than you did when you went in. Yep. Be worried about soreness. You're going to go in the first day and you're going to pick a weight that's not, not squishing you. You know, something that's fairly difficult to move but isn't really taxing. And if you're an older person, see, if you do that on Monday and you're a young guy, maybe Tuesday morning you might be sore. If you're an older person, it'll probably be Wednesday morning. Uh, yep. Know that the only thing that makes that feel better is squatting again. That is no joke. That's not just a trick we tell you to get you to go back to the gym. It'll actually you'll actually feel better. And after your second session, you probably won't get sore again. So be yep. patient with that as well. You might be wrecked on Tuesday, especially if you were a little more aggressive than you needed to be. Or yep. Wednesday morning, you might have trouble negotiating the stairs. But know that by Friday, you probably won't be sore again unless you have to lay out for a number of weeks because of illness or travel or something. So uh, be patient with that soreness. And eating that protein helps with the soreness. Absolutely. And sleeping. Going to to bed the same time every night is a big deal, too. you got to make sure you get your rest in. And in your fourth year, you can listen to the show where I gripe about how I don't like to train. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but don't right. listen to that show until you've done this. Yeah. There's another Barbell Logic podcast. I, in, we've got all these new listeners that are coming in. I think we've got, well, the show's doubled in size, I think, since uh, New Year's Day. Sure. And, yeah. you know, we want to we want to make sure that we have information for everyone, right? So, yeah. uh, so we're going to go back from time to time and talk about these basic things. And uh, hopefully they're yeah, good and if refreshers you, if for you. If you're somebody that's listened to the show for a long time. And and this this is a probably a good episode to send to a, a friend or family member that that hasn't listened to the show and needs to understand 
what they need to do and how you know why they need to get into the gym. And so the the sound quality obviously now is going to be way better than it was in the first twenty episodes. And that's a, you know, episode it, fifteen is the how to kill it your first day in the gym. Yeah, it's a, I'm it's sure a the good sound show, quality. Though. It's a good show. Good show. Yeah, it's probably yeah. better than this one. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, man, we love this stuff. And, uh, you know, the thing about strength training is it's, it's just it's in a general adaptation that seems to make everybody better. It makes everybody's quality of life better. Uh, doesn't matter what your background is, what your demographic is and all that stuff. It just it makes everybody's quality of life better. And oh, so that's God. why we harp on those things. I, um, I went to that concert yeah. last night. and It was a sellout yeah. show and it was outdoors and uh, it was not my tribe. They were not my people. You know, and it just, yeah. it was just, it's, it's shocking to me how disgusting most people are. Yeah. You know, just, oh, you know, you're like metabolic syndrome, metabolic syndrome. You know, you just look at these people, you know, like osteoporosis. <laughs> and you can just see all of the um, unhealth there, you know, and yeah. um, it's, it's a little depressing. It's not just because of the aesthetics and me having to look at those people, but you know, I feel I feel bad for them, and, and they don't know sure. what they're doing. They just don't know what they're doing. All these people, these pronated ankles, and and you know, they're a hundred pounds overweight, and you know, we've got the prescription. We know how to to fix that. So, uh, your first month is the first step towards not being one of those people of Walmart. <laughs> All right, guys, there's another Barbell Logic podcast. Send us an email to questions at barbell-logic.com, and we'll answer that on a future question answer episode. If this is your first week, weeks or months of training and you've got questions, especially you guys, send us those, uh, send us those questions uh, to that email address, and we'll answer those on a Saturday show for you. And go to iTunes. Uh, leave us a review. That's always a big help to us and helps us get the word out to more and more new listeners. So th thanks for listening, and we'll talk to you in just a few days. Dude, bro, 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 bro.